Hey guys, I am joined here today with Tom Ryan, a LinkedIn expert, and I actually saw him give one of my clients and friends a review of her profile live. That was gutsy, Tom. <laughs> and but it was really good. It gave um, you know, like I think I know a lot sometimes. But I was like, you said quite a few things. I was like, ooh, I need to know more. <laughs> so I wanted to bring you on the show. It's great to be here. Yeah, I'm excited. Now, some people are still not on the LinkedIn bandwagon. It's a shame to say. So let's start there. Why LinkedIn? Why, as a business owner, should we be putting a lot of time and energy into it? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, you know, LinkedIn, in my eyes, is really kind of just getting started, uh, you know, and, and the thing that separates it from everything else is that it's really more of a networking platform versus a social media platform. So, you know, I don't use LinkedIn for anything really social at all. It's all not that I have to be super serious on there all the time, yeah. but it's really just meant for business. And most people seem to understand that. And so you don't get that distraction as much like I'm not not posting personal photos or personal stories. Yeah. A whole lot. It's more about sharing value with each other and your different crafts, your different areas of expertise. Um, and it's just a when you curate your feed correctly, it becomes a really great place to learn, actually. Um, but most people just kind of still sort of see it as a bit of a, a resume site almost versus a networking mm -hmm. platform where they're there to learn. And so when you make that shift, that's when it really starts to bring you value. Agreed. And it's like, you know, I'll be sitting at night and I will actually scroll on LinkedIn and I'm like, Ooh, that's an interesting podcast. And I'll start listening or, Ooh, that's a great article. I'm going to dive mm -hmm. in or even just listening. And then I even check to see who's, you know, watching that. And the amount of connections I've made have been huge. And they've even converted into conversations, people being on my show. I mean, the opportunities are, are there and they can happen fast. Yeah. Yeah. That, that type of behavior, I think is just more and more common where people, you know, just get that, like, you know, a connection request or like when you're reaching out in the right way and you're not pitching, you're actually just there to make a good connection yeah. and you're there to share value and maybe not expecting anything in return. When you do that more and more and you start connecting with more and more of those types of people, it just is a, it's a, a total snowball effect and just compounds over time yeah. and it becomes a lot more valuable. Agreed. And I really find that the podcasting industry is very connection and mm -hmm. community oriented. So that obviously helps. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're talking uh, to podcasters, whether they're a guest or a host. And so it's like a lot of, we want to be on other shows. So how do you showcase your expertise, your authority, get more bookings, on LinkedIn? Like, does your profile have to look and be a certain way? Are there certain words that we should have in there? Yeah. You know, it's, it's really thinking about your profile, like it's a landing page. So kind of the, right. the old school way to do LinkedIn is think, Oh, I got to make this a resume. It's got to be all about me. And I don't want to do my bio. And you know, that can be difficult. And, and also it's hard to do it for yourself to make it really kind of compelling and clear and, and all the things you need to really capture the attention. It's hard to talk about yourselves sometimes. So uh, what you want to do is think about it more of how are you helping people and make every part of your profile very client facing. Um, it's all about them versus all about you. Um, of course, you want to tell people what service you provide and kind of what your niche is and what, you know, where your area of, of expertise and focus are. But, but really um, from top to bottom, starting with the banner, like, you know, who is it for? What is your service or what is, you know, what are you providing? Um, what's the result that you're getting right for people? Uh, and, and, and all the way down from your banner to your headline, um, you know, what's a good call to action? You know, if you're a, a podcaster, then it's about, uh, you know, here's a, maybe the latest episode on XYZ or, um, you know, what's the benefit someone is going to get by clicking on that link, like learn about, ABC, right? So kind of give them some value and be very clear about what you're providing kind of in every, every section of your profile. 
I know. And that totally makes sense, but it's amazing how many LinkedIn profiles you go to and the banner is like kind of nothing. And yeah. even in like your title, your name, the beginning blurb there, sometimes it's kind of like ambiguous or if people are trying to be funny and I'm like, okay, but I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't yeah. know how you can help me, but that makes total sense. Yep. And, and the other thing to think about too, especially if you're a podcaster is like, when someone Googles your name, especially if you have any type of unique name, um, but even if not, like the first few results are, are likely going to be your LinkedIn profile. And so yeah. they might, someone might say, Hey, check out, you know, John Sanders, uh, podcast. It's great. And then they're going to do Google your name and then, you know, what's going to come up Well, your LinkedIn profile. And they're probably going to click on that. And then when they go there, make that a landing page for, your podcast, right? Yeah. So don't make it about all about you, but it's like, what's going to excite people. Uh, so, so just consider that too, is, is they're going to find you on Google a lot of the time and it's going to be to your LinkedIn profile. I do that all the time. When I do a search up the top of LinkedIn, sometimes I can't find someone I'll like Google it with like an association of their podcast or whatever. And then mm -hmm. I will find it. Yeah. And that's really important. I think to think about is that when someone searches for you, your pod, whatever it may be, if your LinkedIn profile comes up, like that's a part of who you are and your business identity. Mm -hmm. It totally. it needs to attract your, your ideal client. Yep. Now in something that you said with Nancy's uh, profile review, which I never really thought of before, and that was the featured section or featured articles, sorry, that's in your profile. And I always thought it was, okay, you share a blog, you share a podcast post, your newsletter, but your perspective was slightly different. Can you go into that? For sure. Yeah, it, 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 it is actually called your featured section that you're right. Oh, okay. Um, you can put like, you know, like a, a, you know, a featured article could be there, but I, what's really what, you know, and, and this is what makes the most sense to me and what I see working well is you can give people, of course, you can give people content to go check out, you know, a video here and there, but oftentimes they're just going to drop off after that. And you, what really happened there? Did you generate a lead? Did you get a new listener? Um, you know, are, did you add anything to your overall ecosystem in a meaningful way? And so what you want to think about in your featured section is what's the action that you want someone to take next. So now that they're on your profile, you have a visitor on your profile. What do you really want them to do after they go there? And, you know, it might not be to check out a YouTube video real quick and then go on to their next thing. So instead of that, can you offer something of value? It might be a guide. It might be a uh, sign up for a newsletter. It might be to get a free consultation. Um, whatever makes the most sense for your business or your podcast uh, for the, the next step that someone should take, put that on your featured section. And I don't, I, I typically recommend people don't have more than one or two options there. Yeah. Um, uh, oh. So it's a really good place to add some branding as well, but just make it really clear, you know, a confused mind never buys or never takes action. You could say in this case. Um, and so don't make it confusing. It's like, what's the one main thing you want them to do and just, focus on that in your yeah. featured section. I love that. I don't know why I've never thought of putting a lead magnet there, but it like, absolutely. You want to convert the people onto your e-list. Yeah. Um, so super smart. I haven't changed mine yet, but I will, Tom, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. So we're podcasters. Obviously we have content, whether we're a guest or a host, are there tips that you can share on how we can share that content in a meaningful way that is going to attract our ideal client. And I, I'm assuming, Tom, that there are algorithms in play mm -hmm. of things that you should and shouldn't do. Yeah. And I mean, they always change stuff. So I don't, don't be a slave to the algorithm because it changes a bunch and I don't really get into that much. I mean, there are certain post types that s seem to do better than others. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, video is up there, you know, so, you know, text only posts are, are good. Text with an image is good. Um, carousels are good and videos are good. Um, you know, I would say if you're a, if you're a podcaster, I would go with more of the video 
format um, and and post type and and do shorts of your podcast. Like that's what yeah. the top podcasters do. Emulate them. You don't need to change the the formula here. I would get really good shorts that are interesting parts of your podcast. They don't have to be long, and put them on LinkedIn consistently. You know, one per day. Um, with maybe a little blurb at the top uh, and, 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 and just consistently be posting shorts on, on the most interesting parts of, of, of your episodes. That's a great point. And do they have to be a certain size? I mean, I know Facebook has their reels section. Mm -hmm. Instagram has their reels section, mm -hmm. but LinkedIn doesn't. So like, does it matter yeah. if the video is square, if it's like vertical Vertical is going to give you more of the of the screen uh, visibility. So I would go with more of a vertical format, oh, but it's not going to matter much yeah. like LinkedIn. If you've noticed, like they'll uh, depending on the on the dimensions of, of the size of what I mean by that is uh, you'll see all different sizes, I guess. Yeah, but, you do. So, but, but yeah, vertical works well. Um, so I would just stick with that because you probably that's probably the format you have a lot of your shorts in anyway, because you should be, you know, if you're smart, then you just actually just duplicate this and or, uh, sort of repurpose it would be the, the mm. how the kids say it, uh, to, to all these different platforms. And there's no reason not to YouTube shorts, TikTok shorts, and put it on LinkedIn as well. Yeah. Now you mentioned um, doing something every day. One of my clients has this thought in their head that they only need to post once a day, Monday to Friday on LinkedIn. Not quite sure they have that in their head. Yeah. But is there like a rule of thumb or does it really not matter? I think that that's fine. I think if, if you skip the weekends, it's not a big, I think you can even get away with posting three days a week. Oh, wow. Um, just depends on, you know, what, is it good content or not? You know, mm -hmm. like don't post for the sake of posting. If you have really good content and you have, you know, seven pieces of content that are great to get out the door every week, then by all means, I would do it every day. But if you don't have that much content, then three times a yeah. week, is, I would say three times at a minimum every week. Yeah, I agree. And I'm going to selfishly ask you one more question before I dive into a, a bigger part of the topic is uh, I'm seeing less and less um, company LinkedIn pages. Mm -hmm. It's just people in their profiles. Do we need to have our profile and a business page? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say you need to. What's it, it kind of rounds out your profile though. Like what I would say is you don't, it doesn't look great if you have your, the company you work at uh, and then you don't have like a logo or something to go with it. So I, if you're going to have your company on, like in your experience section, if you're going to uh, put down that you work at a company and it's probably mm -hmm. your company, um, just make sure that, you also have a company page that has the logo or image on that company page. Cause if you don't, then it's going to look like it's going to be, give that generic LinkedIn image. Oh. That, you know, so it makes you look kind of unprofessional or unestablished, I would say more so. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if you, if you put in your experience section that you work at a company, make sure that you have a company page for that company. Okay. And then do you need to post to that all the time as well? No, I mean, I, it doesn't get nearly the amount of reach no. personal profile does. They're making a little bit of a comeback and they'll probably make it better. But I would say like, figure out the good, get good traction with your personal yeah. page and then you can focus on company yeah. down the road. Cool. I appreciate those tips. So half the reason why we're in LinkedIn, of course, is to grow our business, get clients. And to do that, you need leads. And so- what is the strategy that you're finding is most effective to get more leads out of our LinkedIn accounts? Yeah. So I think, you know, it, it again, it all starts with, everything starts with the profile, right? So having a really clear way to tell people what to do next and to give them something of value that's going to help you generate leads. So mm -hmm. give away your best stuff on your profile and use that as a way to generate leads when someone arrives there. Now, the other question is, all right, how do I get those visitors to visit my page? Um, and because you, you can't do anything without actual visitors. So, yeah. you know, so that's going to be through is going to be through uh, content and, and outreach. Right. Um, and and engagement. So, uh, you know, looking at, at at content first, you know, posting, like I was just saying, would be posting some of those shorts, doing it consistently 
The other big part though, that people really miss is the engagement piece. So engaging on other people's mm -hmm. posts that, uh, that kind of fit your, your, your target market, your ideal client profile, um, and, and consistently engaging there and, and then adding connections from those posts that, that of people who are also engaging. So, you know, it doesn't do you a lot of good to add a ton of connections of people who aren't really active on the platform. You want to look for people who are actively engaging, who are commenting, because those are the people who are going to reciprocate when you make a post, they're mm -hmm. more likely to, they're more likely to comment on your stuff because they've already proven that behavior of commenting. Um, so that's a, that's a thing to look for. And then kind of, you know, as you start engaging with more people that are, uh, that are commenting on posts, then you start commenting on each other's posts. And that's what kind of gets the snowball going. Um, and, and it starts compounding over time. Uh, and you just get a lot more visibility on those, on your content. Um, so the engagement piece is big. Um, and then the other thing is, is reaching out and getting in the, the inbox, getting direct messages to people. So when you connect with someone, go, go engage with one of their last posts and then tell them that in the, in, when you met, when you reach out to them. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can kind of set up that cadence of like connect, go engage with their post and then go send them a message saying, Hey, glad we connected. I just, I loved your last post. I just wrote a quick comment because um, it was a, such a great post and just let them know and be like, and just leave it at that. And then what that does, speaking of the algorithm is now LinkedIn is going to be showing your content to those people because they're seeing that you are messaging each other right. in the DMs, right? And you'll likely get a thank you or something from them. So now you've got messages going back and forth and now more, more and more people are going to be seeing your stuff. I love that. And I do find when I take the time to like, I'll like binge and comment on people's stuff and then I'll be like, Oh, I see who else has commented, commented. Yeah. I'm like, who were they? Are they also in the podcast industry? And so mm -hmm. I, you know, you, you go down a bunch of rabbit holes granted, but when then I start following them and then I notice they follow back, they might message and mm -hmm. then, you know, a couple of weeks later, they'll comment on my post. So it does work. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's a little bit of a numbers game, but it's really just more of a, of a value first game and, and with the right people, like, you know, more and more people are getting more and more active. And so look for those people and bring them into the fold. And it really does compound. Uh, and, and you see big results if you can just keep up that consistency and just have a cadence that works for you. Agreed. And so you have on your site and your website or whatever that you gain lead gen by putting your value offer in front of more target prospects. What mm -hmm. do you mean by value offer? Yeah. So I think of a value offer as almost like a, a slice of your service. So, mm -hmm. you know, if I were to take, um, if I were to take like, uh, uh, say a, a maybe a coach uh, for, as an example um, or a consultant um, you know a slice of service might be sharing a, a video with some insight on how uh, you know certain companies so if you're they were reaching out to maybe maybe they're reaching out to like a manufacturing company or something and they would say something like you know uh, I, there are many things that manufacturing companies have in in common that I've noticed after working with many of them um, where, you know, maybe it's, it's hard for them to create a more of a purpose driven team. And here are some things that I help uh, that I've noticed that has been kind of the, the things that they need to do first in order to do that with their teams. I've, I created a quick video on, on how to do this. Uh, mind if I send it your way. So it's like kind of asking permission to send something of value. Um, but that's not pitching them or trying to sell mm -hmm. them. It's just like the value offer is really that it's just, here's something of value. I'd like to offer it to you. Um, and that's it. There's no strings attached. If you want to take this value and run, go for it. But um, that that's kind of the concept behind getting the value offer in front of as many people as you can. And you do that through in, in the DMs, right? Oh, so that's okay. what I help folks do is develop that, that value offer um, and what's the strategy and then who are we targeting and all that. And then what's the conversion process going to look like after we send it and start getting leads. And so what you're giving them is basically a lead magnet. Like they would give their email 
to get that or are you just giving them the thing for them potentially to like engage in? yeah potentially it could be a loom link you know a lot of times oh, we use okay loom, so it's just a video it could be a personalized video where it's like hey you know i i noticed uh you know some some uh, on your on your landing page on your website i noticed a few things you could update to uh, make it more more compelling and make it more uh, up your conversion rate. You know, mind if I send over some tips on that? This is if you were maybe a a copywriting expert or something yeah. like that. So, but it's just take it's it's give yourself the chance to demonstrate your expertise is kind of the main takeaway here. Um, so, and you can do that a lot of times with the video. You could do it with a Google Doc. You can do it with you know some kind of checklist or guide or you could offer a consultation, you know, but now you're asking for people's time. So that kind of has mm -hmm. to make sense. But, um, but th that's kind of the concept of the value offer. I like how you're, when you are DMing them, how you say, Hey, I have this thing for you. Would you like it? Versus what I see in my DMs sometimes it's like, I do this and I do this, like book a mm -hmm. call with me, or I do this, you know, yeah. And then they give you the thing to like sign up and I'm kind of like, right. It's whoa. like, whoa, whoa, hang on there. So yeah, it's more, it's more about giving the, the reason why it works well is, is for a few reasons. So one is you're qualifying your leads. So it's mm. like, here's something of value. Now, anybody who says yes to that, well, they're probably a pretty good lead for you because it's, you know, you've made it very clear about what it is and it's going to be relevant to what you sell, obviously to your service or whatever, but you've qualified your leads when someone says yes to that you're giving yourself the chance to demonstrate your expertise through whatever you are delivering you're giving value demonstrating your expertise and that's what kind of makes you a human being right and that's mm -hmm. what makes someone want to work with you is that you know what you're doing um so that's really important and then it also gives you a good reason to follow up and say hey what what did you think you know did was it that did that resonate with you i'd love to hear your thoughts something like that and the last thing is it, it allows you to kind of compound your lead list. So a lot of times when you do outreach, typically what people do is like what you just said, I have this thing, I do this, want to get on a call or want to buy this or whatever it is. And, and, you know, you don't get much response, but with this, it's a value offer. A lot of people are going to say yes, even though they might not buy right away or get on a call with you right mm -hmm. away they should still be added into your lead list, right? These are now leads that should be followed up with in some way, whether it's email, they go on a newsletter, whatever, in one month, three months, six months, they're very likely to you know, still take action, um, but you're not throwing all those leads away. You're actually capturing, yeah. compounding your lead list every day uh, by doing this, doing it this way. Now, do you need that sales navigator, the upgrade that they have in order to do all that effectively and with a higher volume than like ones and doozies? Yeah. I mean, it, it helps a lot because for a couple of reasons, one is you can get a lot more targeted uh, on who uh, you're reaching. There's just lots of, you'd be surprised at how effective it is when you get way more targeted, you can really uh, filter down on, on who you want to reach out to. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is you can, you can just get more messages out to people. Yeah. Um, you don't have to be connected with people. You can do things like in mail um, and 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 uh, service messages and other other types of of ways of messaging that you can't do with a free account. Yeah, that makes sense. I know I've kind of looked at it every now and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when you email someone from that in mail, does it show up as sponsored or is that something different? No, that's something different. That's okay. uh, you can pay. Uh, you can do sponsored is under the is under the ad section, of right? The so yeah, you can, that's one of their ads is like pay to get into the, the in-mail um, as a, as a message. Yeah. And how do you, like, even if you're doing it yourself, like, how do you target your market? Like, how do you find the people? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So your target market. Yeah. So, uh, you know, looking at, at things like uh, their their industry, their location, if that's important, mm. the size of their company, um, what's their title, um, how long have they uh, been at the company or how, how many years of experience they have. Um, you can target by, have they posted in the last 30 days? That's a good one if you want to really look at more engaged people. Have they changed jobs in the last 90 days? Um, 
you know, what's their, what's the company size? Um, what industry are they in? Mm -hmm. uh, there's all kinds of filters that you can use. Um, you know, what groups are they a part of? Right. Um, so that's another way you can actually message folks. Uh, if you're in this, if you're in the same group as someone on LinkedIn, you can message anybody in that group. Oh, I didn't know that. I've never uh, actually played with groups. Yeah. They're, they're not very useful in, in the sense of, of, uh, interacting with people but the nice thing you know if you're if you are doing messaging is you can join groups and then once you're in that group you can message anybody in that group mm. without needing to connect with them i did not know that now i'm gonna have to look to see if there's any podcasting groups <laughs> yeah, I'm, sure there are. <laughs> I'm sure there are um i was gonna ask you another question and then it just oh hashtags like are people yeah. using them in linkedin yeah, people still use them, but I, I, it seems like the data is pretty clear. Like they're not helping you get much reach if I didn't think all so. on your post. So they're kind of a, they're more of a of a decoration than anything else. It seems. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> but I mean, if you're, yeah, I, I kind of wondered. <laughs> yeah, especially if they're obscure. You know, if it's something really common that someone is actually going to search as yeah. like, then maybe use it, but. People just don't search that much that way. No, you they know, don't. They're not, they're not adding hashtags. So it's kind of, yeah, not, not helping much. I agree. Um, so I know, obviously, that you help people like rewrite and fix and their profile. Um, and you also help people with this whole lead gen. Now, what I like about you is there are other LinkedIn companies or related companies out there that will, you know, get leads or do lead gen. But mm -hmm. it, it seems like you really look at the bigger picture in looking at their messaging, who really their target market is, what is your offer? Um, mm -hmm. So can you touch upon that? Because I think that's really important. Yeah, I mean, there's there's really three variables that determine whether your outreach is going to be successful or not. And that's going to be who you're targeting, what does your message say, mm -hmm. and how often are you saying it? So the volume that you're sending. So it's targeting messaging and volume. That's it. There are no other variables. Hmm. Um, your profile is, a, is I would say, a, a factor yeah. uh, because you have a good profile, that's for sure. But that's kind of the minimum standard. You know, if you start doing outreach, you want to have a good profile because people are going to look at your profile totally. right away. Um, but those are the three factors. And you know, so yeah, being, uh, you know, uh, making sure that you, that you first start with the right targeting and that can take, you know, if you're just starting out, it's going to be kind of difficult to maybe get exactly, uh, the right filters and who you should be contacting and make sure that it makes sense. And then the messaging is a big piece of it. Cause you want to have, you really should be reaching out with something of value, uh, instead of asking for people's time or asking for their money right mm -hmm. away, you know, give and, and let that generate a conversation and then let that generate the next step. Right. So, you know, might be one extra step, but that's the way that, uh, that outreach is done in, in 20, in, you know, here we are in 2023, almost 2020. Mm -hmm. So that, and then the volume, and that's another one that people get stuck on because absolutely if you don't have sales navigator, you no, know, who wants to send, you know, even 30, 40, 50 DMs Ooh. a day. Um, so we, we, we do that for you and we're not using any automation or anything. And that, that has become more difficult, uh, especially recently. I think LinkedIn is cracking down a, a quite a bit more on, on automated tools. Mm. Uh, and so that's something, you know, that's kind of a shortcut that may not be available uh, or too available anyway, much longer. Um, so it's just something to think about. Yeah, absolutely. And to have someone else that can be like an extension of you, because as a business owner, it's like you wear so many hats, you do so many things and to have that time to do that lead gen and the sales part of it, it's so much. It is. Um, yeah. It's not work that you, you know, probably enjoy. It's, it's It can be kind of repetitive, but it's important because <laughs> look, like as much as we may not want to admit it, volume is a big part of yeah. any kind of lead gen. And, and you know, it's the hardest part of any business is where are you going to get customers? Where are you going to get clients? How are they, how are you doing that? And Volume is a big factor, no matter what your method is, you got to have volume. Yeah, agreed. And I feel like when you are having those conversations with people in LinkedIn and you kind of get to that DM point that like, 
I don't consider them a cold lead. Like they're super warm versus like Facebook ads or, you know, other avenues. I just feel like you have a higher chance of conversion. Not that I have any stats to back myself up, but I feel like that is the case. (laughs) Yeah. Especially if it's an inbound DM and someone's DMing you because they saw your content or something. So I would, you know, there's, there's two ways to get, to get, uh, you know, leads. One is inbound, one is outbound, right? So inbound is going to be through your content and, and your profile and those things and, and putting out, uh, good content, uh, consistently, and that's more of a tailwind and that takes a bit longer to get going. I think everyone should do both, mm-hmm. but um, it's going to take a bit longer. And, and that does compound really nicely over time is the, on, on the inbound through content. But most people aren't going to figure that out because they don't stick, they don't stick with it. Um, I did say podcasters have a unique advantage because they're usually in it for the long haul and mm-hmm. they have the content mm-hmm. already. And it's just like, it's just a matter of posting it. Um but then there's outbound, which is more of a speedboat. And but I think you should do both consistently. You know, every day that goes by that you're not doing some kind of outreach is a wasted opportunity because it's just like, you know, offering as long as you're doing it in, in a tasteful way and you're offering yeah. value, you know, you're just getting more eyes on on your on your your offerings. Yeah, absolutely. So how can people find you? And then if I remember correctly you actually give free pro- profile reviews, which I honestly think everybody should do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, cause, and that's my value offer. Cause it's like, you know, if, yeah. if that's you're interested in, then you might be looking at LinkedIn as a tool to, to grow your business, which is, and those are the people I want to talk to. So, yeah. um, you know, best to just reach me on LinkedIn. Um, uh, I'm at, uh, you know, and there's a hyphen in between all this, but it's just the, the LinkedIn.com, um, uh, slash in slash Tom Ryan referral program pros. So, and there's a hyphen in between all those words, but the link will be, I'm sure in your notes, yeah. and, uh, just Tom Ryan, um, uh, on LinkedIn. That's the best place to reach me. That's awesome. And, um, I'll also have the, your website as well, referral program pros.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have like LinkedIn social selling services and so forth. And, um, yeah, I mean, we're putting in the time and the effort to create content booster profile. It's like the whole point is to get leads. So why not get the support to make that happen faster for you? Yep, exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's the whole goal is, is just an effective way to do outreach. Yeah. Love it. Thank you so much for coming on. I know I've gotten a couple of good tips and, um, yeah, I can help my clients even better <laughs> with your help as well. And uh, I'm going to go change that featured section of my LinkedIn when I get off the call. <laughs> right on. I'll t- let me know and I'll take a look at it. That's great. Oh, you're awesome. <laughs> thanks so much, Tom. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Lindsay. Bye-bye. All right. See you folks. See you next week on the Leverage Your Podcast Show.